it hits the fan. Oh, that went. Fair enough. It's technically a tablet. So. Probably All right. right. It's 6 o'clock, so we'll call the meeting to order and open with the Pledge of Allegiance. Some of them don't sleep. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll start with our council activity reports. I don't have a ton on here. I was at the AMPI tour last week. I know a number of you were as well. Looking forward to tomorrow's tour at Valley Industries. If you haven't RSVP to Tarek, please do so now. Um, otherwise, that's all I've got. We also have Stearns Municipal League tomorrow night. So if anybody's going to that, it's in Richmond. Neil. I forgot my list, but I know we had uh, policy and procedures, we had uh, budget, uh, went to the fireman's supper Saturday night, and uh, we had Green Roof uh, the 27th, and we have it again this Wednesday. Right. And we just got done with Public Works. Yeah. Feels like it's Megan? Um, it's hard for me to remember because it feels like it's been so long. <laughs> so um, I attended the child care conference in Hutchinson. There's some good ideas there. Um, I believe we had our city council special working session since the last meeting, right? Um, I was at budget and finance and I had a park um, entry meeting as well. And I feel like there's something I'm missing, but if it comes um, to me, I'll let you know. The gala. We were at the gala. Yes, we were yeah, at the, we gala. Were at the gala. That has been since then. That's crazy. It feels oh, like a yeah. long time ago. Yes, we were at the gala as well. And the, or Tarek just reminded me the employee appreciation was also held. A number of us were there. Yep. A lot of employee milestones. I missed that, but that same day, um, I did attend the uh, chamber meeting with Jean. That's what it was. I had to get my calendar out because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the city employee appreciation, the chamber board meeting. Uh, Tarek and I also, there was an email that went out, Stearns County is considering our MPCA resolution tomorrow morning. Um, Tarek is going, I don't know if anybody from the council had planned. Commissioner Bertram did email us over the weekend and said that's going on their consent agenda. So we were going to be presenting, or Tarek was going to be presenting, I should say. Um, but because that's on the consent agenda, there won't be a presentation. So um, the word was no need for us to attend, but I think at least Tarek was planning on going anyway. So. Jean? I only had the gala and the fireman dinner and chamber board meeting. Other than that, I've been busy with family and wedding stuff. <coughs> How dare you have family that wants to get hitched? Come yeah. On. Did you do the tour? Well, Marvin and I had grandchildren get married the same day. <laughs> His granddaughter and my grandson. Not I'm telling you, when you say it like that, it sounds like they married each other. Not to yeah. each other. <laughs> I was just going to clarify, not to each other. <laughs> I was at the AMT. Different tour. location. I forgot that. Paul. Um, Megan was right. It's hard to remember back then, but I think uh, it was the working session mm -hmm. that I went to, uh, the MPI tour, and I came here for the, um, the jail presentation. All right, and that's it. I did go to the AMPI tour as well. I forgot about that. So it's always been my mission in life to be surrounded by that much cheese. So it's pretty <laughs> sweet. <laughs> I just crossed the border to the east. <laughs> All right, department head reports. Ron. Okay, thank you. Um, leaf pickup is on October the 21st. Uh, everyone does need to have their bags out there on the curb by 7 a.m. and compostable bags only. Um, compost site will be open until late November, weather permitting. Um, I'd like to remind all the residents, please uh, utilize the donation box out there. Um, parts and the RV uh, dump uh, still can be utilized. Uh, they all have been blown down, but uh, like I said, they still can be utilized. Uh, reservations for the year at the Gazebo Park, we had uh, 16, and at Veterans Park, there were 27. So it was a very active year out there. Um, the safe routes to school, uh, we did submit a letter of intent to apply there, so that full application will be coming to the council probably within a month or two. Um, last week we were busy, um, hydrants were flushed, everybody's seeing crosswalks have now been painted along with the bike route. 
has been striped um, and sidewalks have all been inspected and if you've seen a guy around there they have all been cut to take away our hazards. Uh, I would like to thank uh, two people or two groups here, the Recovery Center, I don't know if anyone noticed, but uh, the weeds out on Lake Avenue North, they did go out and pull all those. So I'd like to thank you to me and all her crew. And today the uh, Magnify did have their volunteer day and they were at the shop painting uh, uh, some barrels and picnic tables. So. Mm. And uh, just to add on to Neil, the Public Works, we were talking about the water and sewer rates there. Safe routes to school and the chloride grant. Okay. All right. Any questions for Ron? I'll repeat his thanks to those two groups for the work that they did. Yes. It makes things easier for the rest of us. Tark. All right. I think a lot has already been said. Uh, but yeah, um, attended the special policies and procedures meeting as well as the special council working session. We did have the employee appreciation day, which is very nice. We have that every year now, and it's good to have. Uh, and I attended with Megan the child care conference in Hutchinson, which was followed by another call here on child care with the schools. So they put together um, um, a committee to kind of oversee what can be done here locally. And I think it's going to be spearheaded by the school. Uh, attended budget and finance. And then with the library uh, board, I attended the tour of the Howard Lake Library. And uh, that's completed now. We, we have some um, great input from them on how they applied for financing and grants and kind of learning from other things. <coughs> so that was very positive, and I think that will help us a lot. Had the park and tree meeting, and uh, Paul, you said the jail meeting. It wasn't the jail meeting. It was the Stearns County open house on the tax referendum. Yeah. <laughs> I'm building I abbreviated it. Okay. And only only a couple people showed up, but still, I mean, they were here if anybody had any questions, um, so that was good. And then it is Manufacturing Month, uh, so of course, uh, us with the library boards, the chamber members, uh, and then the township board members as well are attending uh, various tours around town. Last week, as you mentioned, was AMPI. Uh, tomorrow's gonna be Valley Industries. And we have two more companies we'll be seeing this month, which are Spanier Metalworks and Safe Basements. So those are coming up and it should be everybody looking forward to them because we haven't toured them before. I forgot to mention something. Last Wednesday I was on a tour of four liquor stores. That's what I meant by tour and you said no. Yeah, no, I forgot about that. <laughs> it was uh, all day, so. But no, we went and checked out some other ones. All right, that's all I got. Questions for Tarek. Right. <clears throat> Marv, are you going to yell at me during the open forum? Okay, Bird's going to. Well, we're not on your stuff yet. I just thought we have our open forum time if I wanted to talk about something not on the agenda. Okay. We'll move forward. We have a consent agenda then. The minutes listed on page one, they are numerous, uh, along with the vouchers on page two of our agenda, totaling 289,499.61. Mm -hmm. And then some personnel resignations. I do appreciate that the one is on April Fool's Day. Mm-hmm. That's what we said at the press <laughs> meeting, too. He's not going to have to. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to count on it. He's here for life. I'd entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make the motion to approve. I'm a little hesitant on E, but I'll give Ron the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> yeah. All right. We have a motion. It's is not going to stop, is it? Nope. I'll second with reluctance. <laughs> well, maybe we ought to give it up, otherwise it'll be moved up to January. <laughs> All right, motion by Herzberg, seconded by Brick. Yeah, those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? None. <laughs> motion carries. All right, let's move new business A up so that Marv and Verge can get on with their happy lives. And then on another programming note, we've got Tarek's a review. Given the number of attorney interviews we have starting at 7, if we can get through everything by about 6.30, we'll do Tarek's review. If not, then we will just put that off until our next meeting so that we're not here until midnight. Or so. even 9. What's that? Or even 9. Or even 9. <laughs> so, um, page 142 of our agenda, the community gardens discussion. I will... Uh, eventually get there in my packet <laughs> it's a long packet it is a long packet i guess through all the interview all the RFPs. Mm -hmm. 
All right, Ron, do you want to talk to us about the community? Okay, plans? I will start it off. Um, obviously, everybody's aware of the uh, land sale out there, and uh, with the land sale, uh, they are going to be coming on uh, 99 feet is the distance that uh, the city will be losing there, and I will encroach the community gardens by roughly 30 to 40 feet. Um, Verge and his crew here were kind enough to come in. We did sit down, and I know they do have some prices, um, so I will turn it over to one of you two gentlemen to present that cost. And if I could ask if you could use the microphone just so that we can hear you. Otherwise, we're gonna get people telling us they have no idea who was talking or what was said. You, I would talk a lot about for you folks here, but you want it on, yeah. on the tape, yeah. Okay. Uh, Ron said, uh, I, I remember, 30, 40 feet. When we measured it, uh, we on the, on the garden committee, uh, Lionel Christofferson, Marv, and myself are the ones representing 30 other gardeners. And we measured it and thought it was about here. Next day, Ron and Lee Slaper were there, and we measured it again. And anyway, we will lose 48 feet of garden. We will bring it up to the existing uh, sprinkler heads. Now that would maybe be, as we were measuring, when we, it isn't all surveyed, we might be six to eight feet off one way or the other. But we're gonna lose 48 feet of garden. We could uh, try and get it on the sides, move it somewhere else. We felt the best solution was probably to go to the east and we would gain 28 feet net we're losing 20 feet of garden we can uh, do that in a couple of ways right now <clears throat> the gardens are 32 by 20. if we have three people that do not want to have a garden next year and we don't have a waiting list we cut down from 30 gardens to 27. it'd be one solution we're not going to bounce anybody out and if there is a waiting list we could go all gardens, instead of being 20 by 32, 18 by 32. 10 gardens long, that would save us the 20 feet we're losing. We feel that's probably the best solution, so we use the current ground. We're, we're going to stay about 80% of the garden that we had up till now will still be gardens. The new part will be, uh, will, will be uh, replacing some of the old, but we will lose 20 feet. We feel that's a fair exchange, uh, or a solution, put it that way. I shouldn't say exchange. I didn't mean that, that wrong word. But we figured that's probably the best solution to keep the gardens and, and respect the rest of the park and not to have to move it way over. And then all the irrigation system would have to get replaced. This way, <coughs> we had Ryan Bertram, who does irrigation systems, out there, he's busy combining and doing other things, and it's hard to get a firm figure from him. But as we looked over everything, he would reuse all the, on the part that we don't tear up, he would reuse the existing irrigation system, make some modifications, because right now, a main pipe goes all the way from the pump house on the east end to the west end, tees off and comes back. We said, could you just start it on the east end? And he said, if I was starting from scratch here, which we are, I would put it right in the middle. That way all of your irrigation heads would have the same amount of pressure. Uh, doing that and putting in new system on the east end where we would expand the garden, uh, he came up with a, a rough estimate. In not, he said, I, I just don't have time to get it. Uh, busy combine, doing other things and stuff like that. Came up with a rough estimate of 4,380 is probably what it would, would come to. <coughs> he just had scratched down some stuff, sent it to me on a text. And now when he came here, and we, we really pushed him hard to come out there and, and visit with us and take a look and see what was there. And I have prepared a bunch of things on the part we know we're gonna lose that garden. I ripped those things out, because he said when they come in and start uh, doing their excavating, next spring he said, uh, Opatz has told him that they're gonna rip out a whole bunch of stuff that he'd put in around that building 
And he said, they're just going to be going wild. He said, so we want to have everything ready to go. So we disconnected that stuff. So if they start ripping it, it isn't going to rip out the part that is we're going to keep as gardens. Um, so that's an expense that we hope the uh, city count, the city would be able to uh, pick up for the gardens, and uh, we would be we, we think it's going to be done in a very professional way. There, we did some uh, tilling on Saturday. The ground is extremely hard right now. Mm -hmm. We know that because no rain, and it hadn't been worked up. We went over it a couple times. Uh, we would talked to Ron about uh, maybe getting some compost and uh, if we could get compost on that part, because we have added compost to the other part of the garden over the years. And uh, he didn't feel there'd be any problem with that. So we uh, request uh, that the city would, would pick up that expense. Do you have any questions? Um, I guess this would be to Ron, or the existing garden, the irrigation, I thought Public Works did that. No. No? No, no, that was all done by private people or the club. Okay. Marv can address that, or, or if he doesn't want to walk up here and he wants to... It was, it was volunteers that did that, and uh, some of us from a couple of grants that we were able to get a hold of. And uh, they also went to a few businesses. I, I joined just when they put the water in. I just remember running that trench with Richard Olmscheid and I, and I can't even remember who else is involved. But uh, the people involved were um, Urban Fuchs, George Davis, uh, Z uh, Fred Zollner. They're no longer around. Uh, so it's Marv would have as much information as anybody else, but it wasn't. How do I say it? It, it wasn't uh, hired done by somebody like who does it for a business. It, uh, and, uh, but we think it's still adequate. We don't think we're shortchanging anything by not ripping up everything and starting. And that would, that would double the, the amount we're talking about here. Now, and I, I know Ryan, he does my system every year, um, blows it out, and then inevitably in the spring when I wreck it, he fixes it. So I know him to be honest and reasonably priced. I don't have a problem with him. For public works to do it, we'd probably end up with the same. I mean, we've got to pay our guys too, and probably busy enough without tackling something like that. Right, and I think since the city is the one that told you to move the gardens, it's only right that we pick up the tab rather than asking the club to do it. Uh, I wished we had an invoice or a, a, a bill we could lay out to you an estimate that it would be exact figure, but he said, I think this should cover it. Uh, I hope it does. He said, I would, uh, I, I wouldn't, I, I sure don't want to come in with a higher bill at the end. If I can come in lower, I hope so. But he said, I think that's where you can start talking to the council about if they want to have a ballpark figure. And he'll be putting this in early spring? Yes, he'll be doing some things uh, today after I finished off a couple of things there and so it's dis disconnected and shoveled open and he's going to cap them off so if, the, if for some reason uh, they come in and do ex excavating this fall, it's not going to rip it up. But otherwise, his plan is to do it in the spring. Bill, because we're so, we're not over 5,000 or over 25,000, we can do it without competing bids, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, four thousand five. You want a five. motion to? I think it would make sense for us to have a motion with sort of a cap on it, maybe forty five hundred. I'll I think. make I'll make that motion to uh, go ahead and reimburse the garden club for the expense of uh, the irrigation at a, up to forty five hundred dollars. Would it make maybe. more sense to just build the city? Yeah, I, I think I'd, I'd be more comfortable if we. Yes, the the bill came as, the as the city will pay up to $4,500 for irrigation improvements to its park, yeah. I think, is rather than saying you're giving the money yeah. to, uh, to I, I was going to bring yeah. that up, too. Yeah. Might not need it. Might not need that much. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, that that'd be the, the cap, yeah. And then this one pains me to say, but where's the money coming from? The park budget doesn't have the money for it. I think it's going. this is a library improvement. We did this for the library. It ought to come out of that fund. 
They don't have any money either. Well, we've been putting ten grand for the last few years into it. Okay. With the plan of a new building, so. Uh, and then maybe we can use some of the. It's it's true. It's more of a library expenditure than a park expenditure. We wouldn't be incurring this, but for the library project. So. Exact point. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think we should get an estimate, so at least we got a paper trail behind have, it. We do have. We do. They have right. one. All right. Yep. Vern, can you just four, send that four. text to Tarek or someone so that we've got a record of it, maybe? We will try and do that. Yep. Okay. Um, so I have a motion right now for, uh, Neil, I'll just say it again, a motion for the city to pay Ryan Bertram up to $4,500 with funds coming from the library capital improvement for the irrigation system at the community garden, correct? Okay, is there a second to that motion? Second. I heard it from Brick first, sorry, Jean. No problem. So we've got a motion by Herzberg, seconded by Brick. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, none, motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen, for all Thank the you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, back we'll, up. We'll stay in touch with Ron on the, on the other things that we've been uh, dealing with on, on the changing of things. Thank Perfect. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. All right, back up to page six. Megan's listed on here is giving a verbal report, but you both said that Jean was there too, so I'll leave it open to either of you to rock, paper, scissors. I can do it if you want, Jean, because sure. it also um, was discussed at the park meeting. So, um, so Jean and I went to the chamber board to discuss if they wanted to take on the annual tree lighting because as discussed, I personally um, cannot do that this year. And they, um, they were willing to do that. Um, they think it would maybe be a good event for um, the princesses to take on, which I think would be really fun. Um, and then it was also discussed briefly at the park board meeting because, you know, it's kind of been done as like an offshoot of the park board and I just wanted to make sure that they were okay with it. Um, and it's a busy time of year, so it hasn't been something that's had a ton of park board participation. So um, um, they were fine with it as well. So I think that it was kind of decided like the city um, workers will put up the um, lights as they normally would. Um, but otherwise, we're just going to hand it off since it is not in the past been like an officially all the time city sanctioned event. Um, we are going to hand it off to the chamber to do with what they will. And I think that, you know, it'll be kind of like it has been for us that every year it'll kind of be have some tweaks to it and some different decisions and whatever else. And I think it'll be a really good time. I think that they're going to reach out to other groups and work together. And I think that's going to be a really good thing for the city. Right. So I don't know that it requires any kind of motion. That's just kind of the, kind of the gist of it. I was going to ask you, Ron, if we need a motion to authorize your guys to go hang lights or what you'd like. We also said that we'd provide the tree this year too. Jean said that. I said that. <laughs> um, so yeah. I think that that the um, park board is still planning on planting the mm -hmm. tree, right, Ron? We but are. If they can find a tree, they if will. they can find one, yes. <clears throat> so, huh? The bigger the better. Well, they can't, I mean, it'll be planted to grow, so it's not going to be to okay. your giant specifications at this time. It's for the future, not for Yes. Correct. Gosh, Tarek. <coughs> um, <coughs> yeah, if Jean has, uh, um, Jean, if you have a, you know, source and want to go to them about a tree, then that would be great. Um, but yeah, I don't know if, because I don't know if it's going to be any different than before. This took place in the gazebo park when the park guys would just go, or the, um, I'm sorry, the city and um, street workers would just go and do the gazebo park whenever. Um, so if the uh, group that's taking this on wants to make contact with them and talk <coughs> about a time, or if they just want it to be already lit up and then they'll have an event or whatever else, that's up to them. It'll be on November 30th, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. If, yeah, if that's what they decide. I know that they have, it's been tied in with Small Business Saturday in the past, but I don't know, depending on um, to what degree the uh, princesses in the chamber want to work with other entities, because I know they usually have a different time in mind, so that, uh, that'll be up to them. True. So. Do you need anything from us, Ron? 
No. Okay. Thank you for the report. We'll move on to the lot split. Is Tarek or Bill? Who wants to talk to us about this one? I can. I mean, the, you have in your agenda packet the um, administrative grant of lot split. I think staff just wanted it to be on your agenda. Um, mostly because they told me if it just gets signed, they have no way of tracking it if it never came to the council. So, um, but this would be um, if Tarek would sign this and then we'd have an administrative lot split document um, and we would send that um, up to Stearns County, presumably. Um, then we have also a draft of the deed from the city to Fortitude Senior Living. I think if the council authorized those two documents to be signed, um, we'd be prepared to move forward. There's a possibility that Stearns County might want a deed from the city to the city for the remainder piece. I don't know. Um, if they do, we'll have to prepare that. I, I haven't done that at this point. I'm not sure if they require that, but it crosses my mind that they might because they have weird things they like you to do. Um, but but I think, um, and I today ordered uh, uh, an owners and encumbrances report just to make sure there's no title issues with the piece we're getting um, and we should have that in a few days. Um, if those things all come together with no problem, I think we'd be in a position to proceed. I know Mr. Johnson was going to be doing some title checking on the city's parcel as well. Okay. So we're looking for a motion to approve the lot split and the deed. I'll make that motion. All right, so we have a motion by Soini to approve the administrative grant of the lot split and the quit claim deed. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Herzberg. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None. All right. Skipping off of the attorneys for right now, going over to new business B. Page 145, we'll give everyone 10 minutes to find it. <laughs> that's what it's going right. to take me. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Tarek, want to talk to us about emails? Yep. Uh, as you know, we've been having trouble with email, primarily with Gmail hosted emails. Uh, and it turns out that this has been a Microsoft issue. Uh, and the Exchange server that we're using is no longer supported by Microsoft. We have two options. Uh, option one, uh, both of them are in the proposal. Option one is to be completely cloud-based or you know, hosted off-site based exchange, uh, which you pay a subscription fee for. And that's obviously what Microsoft is pushing everybody towards because it's, it's cloud-based and subscription-based, which is what they're, the model they're going for. Uh, the other one is upgrade to the latest exchange they ha that they have, which is a couple years old, and they are not going to be supporting it in the next 18 months or so. So if we do get this version, uh, eventually we'll have to upgrade to the 365 version anyway. Uh, so my recommendation is, you know, we, we really don't have many options. We upgrade to the 365 version. Uh, my only hesitation when I uh, talk to Marco about this is that the the monthly fee isn't so bad. It's the um, service charges or the installation charges that is a really high amount. And they said it's very labor intensive to be able to migrate everybody, and make sure everybody is on a new system. So that's what takes time. Uh, but anyway, you have two proposals in front of you, and I, I'm recommending that we go with the 365 version. Uh, money, of course, for this. Uh, talk to Belinda. We still have some ARPA money, which we've been using for the laser fish program, and we can use some of it for. We have to use it by the end of the year, by the way. There's 28,000 roughly remaining in it, and we can use that for this purpose. 28,000 after the laser fee stuff? Uh, remaining right now. So, uh, yeah, there's still a little bit left on a laser fee, but there'll still be some amount remaining. How does this server that we're talking about here differ from the one that we did last year? Uh, this is an email. I mean, it's called uh, email server. It's just really the email program that we use. Uh, the server is what we host all of our programs on, and we share data, et cetera. That's, they're two different things. Okay. So they didn't sell us a, a rotten egg last year. No, nope. our server's good. It's uh, you know pretty new, and it's updated. No, Office 365 is the way to go. It's unfortunately the future. I'll make the motion that we go ahead with the Office 365 option one. 
and take the funds out of the ARPA. Okay, there's a motion from Herzberg to go with option number one, the Office 365, with funds coming out of our ARPA monies. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Swingy. Any further discussion? There are none. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None. Yes. Page 154 of the chloride grant run. Okay, thank you. Um, just a quick history on that again is um, three years ago during a drought year out on our irrigation system, we had some uh, better crops growing on dry ground uh, compared to our irrigated ground. Some of those plants are, were pulled, sent to the University of Minnesota, and they came back with uh, very high levels of uh, chlorides in them. Um, trying to identify the source, you know, we sampled the wells, they came back roughly 35 parts per million of chlorides. Sampled the outgoing water from the ponds, that was running somewhere in that uh, 350 to 400 parts per million. Uh, so where would that all come from? Um, sampling our main uh, water user AMPI, they ran in that 140 to 150, so not very high, but the city's water came back at 350 to 500. So extremely high, and basically identified as water, or as softeners being our uh, source of chlorides. Um, the grant we're looking at here, um, it is uh, obviously to reduce the amount of chlorides, and we're applying for $250,000, of which 50,000 would be a match, and we can utilize in-kind services uh, for our match. Um, we will obviously have to work with our local uh, water conditioner contractors. Um, if we do get the grant, um, we'll get prices. I think the first thing everybody asks is how much um, would of a rebate would we offer? Um, I guess Public Works, we threw around somewhere between 500 to $800, um, but that may not be enough yet. So I guess that decision does not have to be made at this time. Um, we can't do that down the road. But we are looking at there, we do have a th roughly 1,050 accounts, and uh, we would like to target 25% of those. So we would like to try to work with roughly 200 to 225 homes or and or businesses. Um, yes, like I said, Public Works, we did uh, recommend this just before the meeting. And uh, I think we've been waiting on this grant for about two and a half years now, so mm -hmm. and it finally has come out. So it is gonna be somewhat of an intense grant. There is some requirements for keeping the records, inspections, and also part of this will be sending my crew to uh, a training for uh, salt and sand, uh, for applying salt during the winter, so. It. Other than that, um, at this time, all we are doing is applying for it. I'll make the motion to authorize the middle of the MPCA chloride reduction grant. Motion by Sonia stated on the action sheet. Is there a second? A second. Seconded by Rick. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion carries. All right. Okay. That is it for our action items tonight. I said that we'd do tariffs review if we had enough time. I'll defer to the council at 6.34 by my clock. Do we want to do that or do we want to take a 26-minute recess until we start the attorney interviews? Or actually, let me do this. Let's talk about the interview questions that we have. Jen printed some up for us. They're on the yellow paper. Could we take up five minutes before we do that? Sure. Got a request for a five minute recess. Thank you. Let's uh, let's take five minutes. Six forty. We'll come back. We know we we're going to go over the phone. Well, we'll be back in session here while Tarek Works. sets up the Zoom. Is this so we have. I guess the microphone works.
The microphone does work, Tark. Yes, we're public. Figured, but I was just checking. Yep. Um, so we have six firms that we're looking at and talking to tonight. Jen prepared a list of questions for us so that we can kind of keep the questions all the same between the different ones. Um, I know that's what we do with our HR hires. So I think it's just good practice, but we certainly don't have to. That we aren't bound by the same rules here. But uh, any thoughts on the questions that are proposed for us? I liked all of them. I had a few in mind heading into it, and Jen hit on them here. Questions about annexation, questions about in-person attendance, those were the things that I thought were strongest. Those are things that were discussed at the policies and procedures. Yep. So. And re reading over their resumes, uh, it seemed some were more involved with annexation and labor than others. But at the end of the day, if we had an annexation, we could probably hire the expert, but at the end, it would cost more money too, but. And one of the things we were wondering is a lot of these have uh, labor in their mm -hmm. packages. So would that mean we'd want to get rid of our labor attorney and have it done with them? Or that's something we'd have to think about. Is that an option? It is an option. Okay. It should be, yeah. And we didn't put it in the RFP, so that's why we left it out. Okay. Because we have one, but it is an option. Yeah. Where are the locations of all these? Uh, they're all in this, uh, well, Twin Cities area, mostly. Hmm. Except yep. one oh, is in town. Except, yeah, one is in town, the rest are all in the metro. Yeah, Alan said it is in town. I thought that, I thought that, uh, yeah. If, anyway, never mind. So, if these are all out of town, will we not have? They will be Zoom, they probably be most Zoom of the time. If we, mm -hmm. and we we can decide if, if there's nothing legal on the agenda, we probably don't really need them. All right, they'll be on this camera guy. I'll just use you guys. Okay. That's more well, I, I think there's something we should keep in mind is. Uh, a lot of them charge for travel time. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if they're coming from Minneapolis. We don't want them here very often. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because it's. And they charge us for the time that they're on Zoom, too. So, I mean, we have to have everything on the agenda that the attorney needs. Yeah, all sure. If they will have to be in person at other meetings, they attend. And I said, well, maybe some planning meetings, maybe some others, but it's really council meetings. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be by Zoom. I said, yes, but sometimes. Yeah. Hey, and Kristen, they all said are you that. able to pop up here real quick? And you guys are all on camera, by the way. Oh, yay. <laughs> Weren't we before? Well, I Favorite didn't comb activity. my hair before I left. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta shine your head. <laughs> you gotta borrow my comb. What mm -hmm. do we need to get better Zoom capability and compatibility in here? Like, is there a way we can use these cameras for Zoom? Not really for these. These cameras, Ooh. these cameras are all hooked up cable. I don't think you'd really get them for, unless you'd be able to feed in our cable feed to Zoom. It's out of my area of expertise, but I don't really think we'd be able to use these cameras really. Because also, like with these cameras, I'm switching back and forth from who's talking, which is good for watching, but not always the best for Zoom, really. So, just it would be nice to have that capability so that we're not futzing around for 20 minutes mm -hmm. trying to set something up that it's just there. Yeah, unfortunately, I think it would be an. You'd have to set up something with web access, and mm -hmm. so, and these cameras don't have web access themselves or anything they just go the feed just goes straight back there and then it gets processed through the tricast my tricaster switcher and then that goes through another process to go out and is that all just because we want to have the channel 8 access primarily and yeah. which doesn't necessarily work anyway 
Uh, the channel eight, but the YouTube, YouTube. and all of that. YouTube, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the yep. YouTube basically goes through the same thing. So, right. but we can see whatever our funds we have remaining. Like you guys mm -hmm. said, get new TVs and see about a better camera solution. Well, and the reason why I'm asking about the channel, like, I know that we live stream. I know that we do that, mm -hmm. but there are a number of cities that will just like record their Zoom meetings. Like every council meeting is Zoomed. Mm -hmm. And then they'll record that and then just post that on YouTube later. Or mm -hmm. if there's a way to live stream it, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking there's got to be a better way. It's the year of our Lord, 2024. <laughs> Something's out there. Yeah, it'd be something we'd have to look into, but I think it would require a bit different infrastructure than what we've got. Okay. And so. Probably. Right. Thanks. Tark, what's the Zoom ID? Uh, here, I'll forward it to you. You're not convinced? No, I am. I'm not convinced in the capabilities of that microphone, so I'm going to set this oh, up here. Okay. Well, uh, you guys are going to have this mic next to you. It's uh, Bluetooth. Oh, well, then I'm less worried about it. But I'll send it to you anyway. You never know. What was Charlie's mood yesterday about? <laughs> oh, God. All right, well, we'll be in recess until 7. <laughs> yeah, we might as well. Okay. All right, 7 on the dot, I'm going to admit. Can I ask one quick question? Hmm. What's the 429 process? Um, assessments and things like that, I believe. Is it, pardon me? I believe it's part of the assessment process. And Okay. Uh, We're not sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. I, I think the test is whether or not they know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it works for me. Because I don't. <laughs> we don't know what it is. Fine. Oh, oh, boy. I don't want to anyway. I don't either. That's right. I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. Okay, look professional, people. Here we go. Okay. Don't want to. Okay. We don't know how to be professional. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> For yourselves. <laughs> Can you pin his video so that he's bigger up there? Yep. Good evening. Good evening. Glad All right. you got yours there. All right, well, Sean, lead the way. Evening, Robert. Uh, my name is Sean Reiki. I'm the mayor here in Painesville. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. Appreciate you taking your evening mm -hmm. to spend with us for a, a little bit here. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of the council. Thanks for making time for me, and thank you for accommodating me by Zoom tonight. Uh, enabled me to keep some commitments this afternoon, so I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, we just have a, a couple of scripted questions, and then we might have some extras here for you. Uh, we've read through the materials submitted, but could you give us like a 37,000 foot overview of your firm and yourself? Uh, absolutely, I'd be happy to. Uh, so my name is Robert Scott. I'm a shareholder attorney at Flaherty and Foot. Our offices are in St. Paul, and we are a municipal firm to our core. Our firm was founded by Tim Flaherty in 1992. And Tim was actually a lobbyist, and the initial practice and focus of our firm was on lobbying on behalf of cities in Greater Minnesota through the Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities. Mm. And uh, quickly after founding the firm, uh, the, Tim saw a need to provide legal services to these member cities through the coalition, hired Chris Hood. Uh, Chris Hood was hired in 1993. Sorry, Robert, continue. I'm sorry. We lost them. Are you there, Robert? Robert, did we lose you? Well, I am here, and I can hear and see you. There, that's better. Okay, we've got you back. I don't know what happened, but you're back. My okay, I'm not sure either, but uh, sorry for any uh, technical glitches here. Um, so the firm started in 1993. Uh, from that point, we have gradually grown, and the theme of our services has been to uh, serve greater Minnesota cities in whatever capacity they need assistance and that has grown to include representation uh, as city attorney or general counsel. Uh, we work for cities on a special project basis. We've uh, developed a number of special uh, practice areas uh, including labor and employment, 
probably most prominently with five attorneys directly uh, engaged in employment representation of cities, um, as well as an environmental practice, uh, real estate, um, litigation. We're not a big litigation firm by any means, but obviously our cities do occasionally need help in litigation for claims that the League of Minnesota Cities Insurance Trust will not represent the city on, or if the city needs to initiate a claim itself. Um, so uh, I joined the firm in uh, 2007, and when I joined, I was the, I think, the fourth attorney practicing day to day, and we have grown since that time to a staff of 19 uh, full-time attorneys practicing municipal law. Excuse me, 14 of which full-time are municipal attorneys, uh, including in those specialized practice areas I mentioned. And uh, I personally am the city attorney, the primary attorney uh, responsible for representing the city of Wilmer, um, the city of New Ulm, the city of Lesseur, the city of Cold Spring, uh, just started working for the city of Wade Park, although we've done a lot of special project work for them in the past. So um, my experience as an attorney is every day I, I represent cities uh, primarily as their city attorney. Um, obviously with that number of clients I'm not doing all the work myself. I have a great team of uh, associates, seven of whom uh, pretty much do what I do which is uh, represent cities uh, through general counsel or special project work. So literally, um, I think the only thing we don't do for cities that you might need at some point would be bond council work. But I think just about everything else, whether it's a you know, really specialized employment issue, an environmental issue, um, we, we'd be able to do in-house. We have somebody on staff who will have the experience, who will have knowledge in the specialized area. So. As an overview, I think our firm has uh, grown to the point where we offer just a tremendous amount of resources to our city clients. I think we would be a great uh, fit and resource for the city of Painesville. Um, we'd be, again, uh, happy to take on that role where you to select us. I think you've talked a lot about this already, but it, again, it's one of our scripted questions here. <laughs> what do you believe to be your strengths and weaknesses with city government? And if there's something you've already talked about, we can just move on. That's okay. No, just, I, mean, I guess the theme for us is uh, we have uh, a, just a great number of resources on, on our staff, and we take a team approach. So I would be, obviously, your primary contact for your staff. I would be responsible for making sure all your projects get done. Um, I, would be resp I would not be doing all the work myself. I would be calling on whoever on our team, I think, has the best uh, knowledge in that subject area, or if it's something that we all do, whoever's got the, the best availability to get you a response quickly. Sure. Um, so I think just through, you know, I think your staff will learn too if you were to retain us that we, a number of our attorneys are, are qualified um, to really to do a number of different issues. <clears throat> um, I think one of our strengths is just our responsiveness. Um, you know, even if maybe I'm uh, on the road or something to another meeting and an urgent issue comes up, you're not going to have to just wait until I see my email the next morning. Uh, if it's something you really need an answer to, you'll know, your staff will know. Uh, we have other attorneys on staff. Someone will be available. Um, so I, I do think that's the strength of our firm is that we, we are very responsive and you, sh you, you should never have to be uh, waiting because you can't reach your attorney. Someone will be able to help you. Sure. Can you talk a little bit about how you would plan to like attend meetings, either in person or Zoom, or how you charge for like if you were to come out here? Uh, yeah, I think the overarching message here would be um, we will accommodate the city in whatever capacity you would like us to um, attend. If it's attending a meeting in person, um, I'm happy to uh, come out to a meeting. Uh, if I can't make it, we'll have someone on our staff come out. Um, obviously, we've become very accustomed to attending meetings like this through Zoom, and I think that actually is a pretty efficient way uh, for us to attend if there's something that comes up. But uh, I also recognize there's some issues where it's just you kind of have to be there. Um, so I think we will follow the city's lead on that. We will be available in whatever capacity you want us to. Um, I just, so you all understand, I do come out that way quite a bit. Um, I pretty much attend uh, Wilmer's meetings uh, 
twice a month. It's not every single meeting, but it's the expectation is that I'm going to come out and it's only if there's an unusually late agenda uh, or some other uh, extenuating circumstance that I either wouldn't attend or would attend by Zoom. So I have no, uh, no hesitancy to come out if that would ever be the, the preference. Sure. But obviously this works great too. Do you or your firm have experience with street improvement projects, special assessments, and the 429 process? Uh, certainly we do. That's, I think, one of the kind of the core uh, municipal law functions that city every city, for the most part, engages in. I think we have represented a couple cities that have tried to move away from that, but for the most part, it's just a core uh, city authority that cities rely on to fund their improvement projects. We're um, pretty much uh, uh, well-versed in every step of that process. As the attorney, we're not usually driving that, although if uh, the city calls on us to review and recommend changes to your assessment policy, for example, we've done that for a number of cities. Uh, if questions come up about the uh, you know, specific notices required, or sometimes there's an issue about, oops, we you know, missed something, or we had bad information and notices went to the wrong, we're, those are routine questions for us. Um, we also engage with your engineers if there's questions about uh, how to calculate assessments, particularly if you have a unique property that maybe doesn't fit in perfectly to the kind of standard per uh, front footage assessment calculation. How would we treat that? Um, we also have represent, uh, represented a lot of cities in special assessment appeals if you're unfortunate enough to have one of your uh, residents uh, formally appeal an assessment you've approved. So from start to finish, we do have experience with that. Um, a number of our attorneys do. Okay. I think we would be able to help in whatever capacity a question arises. Thank you. What is your experience with annexation and joint orderly annexation agreements, specifically regarding litigating joint annexation agreements? Um, that's actually something um, that I think our firm is kind of uniquely qualified to handle. Before our firm even started representing significant numbers of cities as city attorney, one of our specialties was annexation law. Our firm has handled a number of contested case annexations, not so many recently because cities simply haven't been pursuing them um, in our experience. But we've also negotiated, drafted a number of orderly agreements, and yes, occasionally there are disputes under them. I personally handled a case uh, for a city in southern Minnesota um, where it was a dispute arising out of an annexation agreement signed in, it was in the 1980s, I think. And that was a kind of a weird one where the city had, it was essentially a one-time annexation, but the payment of tax reimbursement provision continued indefinitely. Um, and the city took the position that that uh, agreement just was against policy for that to continue indefinitely, given that it was really for a one-time annexation. We litigated, unfortunately, we had to litigate. We prevailed at the district court. It was appealed. We prevailed at the Court of Appeals. Um, that, that's the most recent case I've handled. It was probably four or five years ago. But certainly our firm has, uh, I think, ample resources to handle whatever annexation issue and give you whatever advice you need. Sure. Thank you. Uh, what is your experience, I mean, if we need it in the future, for labor union negotiations, <coughs> union or labor unions, <coughs> things like that? Um, this was another one of our firm's uh, specialty areas, even before we began representing cities as city attorney. My partner, Brandon Fitzsimmons, I think is probably one of the uh, most well-regarded public labor and employment lawyers in the state. He, like all of us, focuses on representing city governments. And he has a team of, I think we're up to five, maybe six uh, full-time labor and employment practicing attorneys in our firm, and that's all they do uh, for cities statewide, in the metro, in greater Minnesota, of all sizes, <clears throat> whether it's uh, negotiating union contracts, uh, litigating uh, and arbitrating grievances that might arise, uh, uh, handling mediations uh, under labor agreements, or simply just the kind of personal issues that come up, whether it's in a union context or not. Um, I think we have a great team that can help in whatever uh, with whatever issue come up for the city. 
Great. Thank you. Our last scripted question is, what would you expect from the city either on or before January 1st to make it a smooth and seamless transition? Um, honestly, this is something that I don't really uh, stress about. We have, uh, as I think you saw in our proposal, we represent, our firm represents, I think, over 30 cities and local governments. Um, our experience is, I mean, we'll have a contract for you to approve. It's a pretty uh, standard contract, although, of course, if you have any concerns with it, we're happy to work through any issues you have. Um, having that contract approved would be the only formal action. And then in order for us to just get up and running, I mean, literally, I think we've uh, had circumstances where we need to start working for the city the next day, and we've been able to do that. We'd suggest probably just a call with your city administrator and any staff that you would like to include just to get us up to speed on whatever the most urgent issues are. But otherwise, I mean, I think we'd just say start sending us stuff and you know, we'll get to know each other pretty quickly and you'll see the, how we operate, the, the work we do. Um, it's been pretty smooth, I think, um, in our experience when we begin representing a new city. Okay. And then uh, I have a question outside of our scripted ones. in the packet that you proposed or that you sent us, you listed a number of cities that you represent, including the city of Sartell. And it, in there it says that you do general municipal, including ordinance review and drafting, litigation, all sorts of issues. But when I reached out to them, they said that they you don't represent them like that. You only represent them for lobbying. So I'm just wondering if you could speak to maybe what happened there or how that got included. Um, I don't have to look at that. If we have them listed as a current city attorney or municipal client, I agree that we are not doing that work for them. Um, we have in the past. Okay. So maybe um, that's how it so was in there then. All right. Perhaps we need to just take a look at that and update the proposal. So if that was incorrect, I apologize. Okay. No worries. That, in, does the council have any other questions? Um, I do. Council Member Brick. Yep. Okay, so um, for the last several decades, we've had a city attorney who has lived here, who's been a citizen of Painesville, um, or the area, and I certainly think there are pros and cons to that, of course, um, to the attorney being so enmeshed in the city's culture, for lack of a better word. Um, do you see pros and cons to that, to being outside of the area? And if you do see cons, how would you plan to mitigate those? Um, I, I think to some extent there could be a con just in the fact that if we're not present with a local office, there's sometimes I think the the bar to initiate a contact with us seems higher. And the way I try and mitigate that is just to encourage anybody that has an issue or need to contact us to do so. I mean, email and phone are great technologies, obviously. And now that we can all just uh, click into a Zoom meeting or a Teams meeting uh, pretty effortlessly, that's also a great way to even have a, a better uh, level of communication and see each other. Um, so I, I think there's, you know, something to an advantage to having someone local. Um, honestly, from a, you know, practicing attorney's standpoint, the one area that I don't think would be an issue for us here would be um, if we were to be uh, providing criminal prosecution services, which our firm does to a couple cities, that's where it actually is, I think, uh, really important because so many hearings are in person. It really is important to have someone who's at least close enough to be able to attend hearings on short notice. Um, the cities that we do represent criminally uh, or represent for criminal prosecution matters, we either have established a local office or have an understanding with the court about uh, how the in-person hearings will be scheduled and limiting that to a couple, but that's kind of a tangent because um, we're really focused on civil services here. For civil, it's uh, I have not really experienced any uh, negatives to the distance. Obviously, I think you can see in our proposal the vast majority of our clients are in Greater Minnesota. Yeah, we're in St. Paul, but you know we've represented the city of Grand Marais for uh, I think. 10 plus years. I've represented personally the city of Wilmer for, I think, going on uh, 12 years now. Um, and it's, I mean, we're accessible. <laughs> Anyone that needs to get a hold of us knows how to do so. Like I said, we're, we're always going to have someone available if there's something urgent that comes up. And when those uh, situations come up where it is helpful to have someone at a meeting, um, one thing, one example I can think of is if you have a controversial matter and uh, uh, there's a resident or an entity who is unhappy with a course the city has taken and threatened uh, legal action if the city uh, takes
takes a certain course. Um, sometimes those are meetings you just want to have your attorney at. Um, so, and when those situations come up, whatever they may be, uh, it, we can anticipate those and have someone there. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have somebody else waiting for us at 7.15. We're a couple minutes late. Um, I'll give you, do you have anything you want to let us know in 10, 15 seconds here? Otherwise, we appreciate your time, Robert. No, I don't think so, Mayor. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I think we would be a great fit for you. We, uh, love, I certainly would. Um, all our staff would love the opportunity to, to do your work. Um, we'll uh, stand ready uh, to do so if called upon. And if not, we wish you the best of luck anyway. So, all right, thank, thank you, you so for much, the time Robert. this thank evening. You. Appreciate thank you. your time. Thank you. Don't leave meeting. Kristen, do you have a lightning charger by chance? If so, I would appreciate it. If not, oh well. I almost brought mine actually, but I don't have it. I specifically knew you were going to need it, and I was like, haha. I know. I leave it the one night Sean brings an iPad instead of his computer. <laughs> all right. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we're already saying no. You already what? <laughs> I know. Not to you. Immediately, no. <laughs> all right. Hello. Adam, Hello. thanks for coming. You're good. Nice to meet you. Thanks, man. Right. Nice to see you. Hey. Hello. Hey, how are you? Good. All right, Adam, we've got a number of scripted questions. I'll go through those, and then if we've got anything unscripted, we'll throw it at you. Uh, could you just give us a brief introduction of yourself and your firm? Sure. Uh, so, let's see. I grew up in a small town, south central Minnesota, called Easton. About 200 people grew up on a farm down there. Uh, went to SMSU for undergrad, got a bu ag business degree, um, played professional baseball for a little while. Uh, after a couple surgeries, that didn't work out, so went back home, worked on the farm, worked at a co-op, and decided to go to law school. So went to St. Thomas for law school. Uh, there I worked at a few different smaller firms. Um, also worked uh, as a defense attorney, in Anoka for a little bit and then joined Amundsen and Johnson here in town. Um, and right now we have our office in Spicer where I primarily work out of, but also come back here to Painesville to meet with clients. So I uh, passed the bar in 2018 and have been working locally ever since as just a general practice attorney. What uh, do you believe to be your strengths and weaknesses with city government? Uh, I, I would say overall, I mean, just starting with a weakness is, as you guys probably saw in my resume, just not having the experience, uh, you know, as pretty much all the other ones that I've looked through. They have a significant amount of experience. However, I do feel like uh, just being a general practice attorney, I do do a lot of legal research, a lot of statutory interpretation, ordinances, and stuff like that. Um, we do do a lot of real estate work at our firm. Um, and so, obviously, you know, variances, uh, all kinds of things like that. I work on, I would say, on a weekly basis. So I, that, I believe, would be my strength. Well, what is your ability to attend our meetings in person, and how would you charge for that? Uh, so I, I think I put in there, I do have uh, fire departments, same, same nights, but those, are, those meetings are usually at 7 p.m. And obviously, if we had anything that you guys needed me in person, I could always skip those and come here. Uh, so that wouldn't be an issue. My time would just be the time that I actually spend here. Um, I don't bill for any travel time, even though even if I'm coming from Spicer, just because we have an office here in town, I don't believe that's fair. So that's how I would go for that. Assuming the answer is no, so maybe tell us how you would walk about, go about learning more about it. But what is your experience with street improvement projects, special assessments, and the 429 process? <laughs> Um, yeah, I haven't done any work specifically with that stuff, but obviously I do have other people that I can call on that represent cities if I have questions like that. Um, obviously, I know Spurter personally as well. 
Um, I could reach out to him if I needed to, I'm sure. Uh, but otherwise, just beyond that, starting there, it's just a matter of starting to look into the statutory requirements, any ordinances, and working on interpretation for that. Do you have any experience uh, in your general practice with annexation or joint orderly annexation agreements? Uh, no, we haven't been involved in any of those in my practice. So that would be kind of a similar answer as far as doing the research, <laughs> figuring out what we, need, what we need to do to get done. And, uh, and just to note, obviously, part of the thing with general practice is you've got to learn all of this stuff as you go. And so I don't generally bill my time for learning these processes either. So it's just the actual relevant work to the project. If the need arose in the future for labor law negotiations or union negotiations or labor advising, do you have any experience with employment law or anything like that? I've done a little bit in, of employment law, but generally, um, you know, that's more of contract relation stuff. Uh, Generally, labor law is a little bit more specialized, so I haven't touched a lot on that in my practice. It's a Furman Way Park that doesn't. You what? <laughs> what do you expect from the city? What would you expect from the city on or before January 1st to make it a smooth and seamless transition? Uh, <clears throat> I guess leading up to that date, um, if I was going to come on board, I would want to <coughs> meet with uh, Spooner to go over everything as far as maybe potentially getting some of the templates, if he's got standard templates that he uses, um, and just making sure that if there's any projects in, in the works that I'm updated with those. Uh, so that would, I think, be the best way to go. Obviously meeting with everybody and making sure we're all on the same page going forward as what is expected of me. Okay. And then Council Member Brick asked this in our last one. I'm just going to make it a standard question. Do you see any pros and cons to living outside of the city? I know you have an office here, but you're in Spicer and you're involved in the community there. Um, so are there pros and cons to you not being in Painesville like Spooner was? And how do you offset any cons that may arise from that? Um, I don't. I don't see that necessarily being a, a con. I guess me not living in the community, um, but I, I would say maybe helps me stay neutral as far as decisions and stuff like that. Am I bumping this okay. computer? <laughs> I saw as well. Um, but then, you know, again, obviously I'm invested in the community. Our firm, you know, sponsors many events in the community and uh, has a building here, obviously, and my partner still lives here. And we're going to, we plan on continuing to do a business here for a long time. So, yeah, I think all of those um, also make me conscious about, you know, the work that I'm doing and making sure it's thorough and not spending a lot of you know the city's time and money on things i don't feel are necessary you know if whatever i get for a project calls for it Does council have any other questions for adam okay anything you want us to know or any questions you have of us um not that I can think of offhand. I mean, yeah, hopefully I can get some experience for you guys. I know I don't have a lot, but I would enjoy doing the work for you if it so comes to that. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate you yeah. coming in, man. Sounds good. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank Be well. Mm -hmm. And we have. There she is. I was going to ask if she's logged in yet, and there it is. Talk to 
Tark, do you have a lightning charger? He does. Look like? The Apple iPhone. An Apple the charger. Proprietary one. Yeah. Amanda just logged in if you wanted to let her in. Amanda, how are you? Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. thank you. So I'll just say, uh, my name is Sean Ranke. I'm the mayor here in town. I'm at the dais with other council members. Um, the camera that so awkwardly is looking at my face may die in a moment here unless we find a charger. So you may be blessed okay. in a second. There we go. Oh, never mind. Sorry, you. There is a charger. Um, All right. So we have a number of sort of scripted questions that we'd like to go through and ask you and then... I'll ask if the members of the council want to chime in on anything else, if that's all right with you. That's great. All right. So, uh, Ms. Johnson, could you just give us a brief overview and introduction of yourself and your firm? Sure. Uh, so, my name is Amanda Johnson, and I am an attorney with Lavander, Gillen, and Miller. It's the name of my firm. My experience uh, personally is um, I've been a city attorney for five or five years now. Uh, before that, I actually uh, worked as a de uh, attorney for in-house attorney for developers. So um, I realized when I was sitting on that side of the table, uh, as I was working with cities, that I actually wanted to be sitting on this side of the table, uh, and that's what prompted my move to city attorney work. I do exclusively uh, municipal um, and then eminent domain work where it touches, you know, things related to city property. Uh, my firm has been around for oh, almost 100 years. I think this is actually really close to our 100th year. We are the oldest firm in the state. Uh, and in terms of additional attorneys in my office, we, we do have a fairly uh, robust municipal attorney uh, practice group. Um, so there's six of us that work uh, directly with municipal related matters. Thank you. What do you believe are your strengths and weaknesses with city government? Could you repeat the question? Yeah. Um, what do you think are your strengths and weaknesses in dealing with city government? I think that my biggest strength is I, I really see myself as uh, listening to the vision that you have for your city and helping that come true. <laughs> um, I, I take that very seriously. Uh, my job is to listen to you as the electeds and then also, you know, staff uh, in terms of what, what do you want the city to look like and how can I be the most helpful in making that happen? Um, so that would probably be the, my strength. In terms of my weakness in relation to city government, there's no such thing as too, ex too much experience when it comes to city related matters. It is literally a mile wide in terms of the topics that you can uh, bump up against. And so I would say just um, you can't have too much experience because it's amazing how many different things are thrown at you as a city attorney. What is your availability to attend our council meetings and some of these things in person versus on Zoom? And what would you charge for in-person meetings, like mile, mileage, travel time, so on and so forth? So uh, I do have the ability to attend in person. Um, I would prefer to, you know, limit that to a couple of times a year. Largely, that is because of the cost. So you do pay me for my travel time. Uh, it looks like it would be about an hour and a half, hour forty-five minute drive. So that's going to be at the standard billable rate. Generally, we do not bill you back for mileage, but you are. I'm on the clock if I'm driving. What is your experience with street improvement projects, including special assessments and the 429 process? So um, several of my cities have used 429 uh, in varying degrees for city project, uh, city road projects. Um, we I've done assessment appeals. Uh, oftentimes, there's 
what, what I have found to be more helpful is working with a city engineer um, more in the front end to have conversations with the property owners in ways that is a little bit more um, less technical and more just frankly giving the property owner the opportunity to be heard and to understand some of their, their frustrations. Road projects are inherently, um, they're not, I don't want to say that they're exactly controversial, but they're, but when it's the road in front of your house and, and then the amount that you're assessed for it, that can be somewhat contentious. Um, the other piece is helping the city to understand legally what you can assess and what you can <coughs> I have some cities that um, are, you know, they assess what, exactly what they can, and there's other, I have other cities that go a little less, so it's something that's a smaller assessment, but then of course the reality is, is those costs have to be paid from somewhere, so then it's sort of being spread out over the entire community, right, because it's just part of your general budget then, general street budget. What is your experience in working with the annexation process? and joint orderly annexation agreements, specifically litigation of those agreements? My experience with um, annexation actually comes from the other side. So I did some annexation when I was a developer's attorney uh, for some property down in Stillwater. Uh, it was a friendly annexation though, so there wasn't, a, it, there wasn't controversy around it. If the need should arise in the future for labor law advice or union negotiation services, do you or your firm have experience with that? Yes, we have an attorney in my office who does labor negotiate negotiations and is an HR specialist. What would you need from us, either like on or before January 1st, to help make this a smooth transition? See that, envision that um, for a smooth transition, probably a meeting um, with a city administrator to talk about high level sort of what are the, what is the general um, culture and atmosphere of the city, both the staff and the council, uh, what types of sort of big projects are ongoing, depending upon what your relationship is with your current city attorney, uh, potentially there could be files transferred, uh, although I can tell you that most of the time, actually, the files don't get transferred, and so you kind of start fresh. But if there was something that you wanted to, you know, document-wise, to try to get that from the existing city attorney. Okay. Do you see any... Uh, so we have a city attorney now who lives in our community. He's been our city attorney for decades. Do you see any pros or cons to living outside of the city limits? And how would you offset any of those cons? <laughs> Yeah, I do think that there it's a pro for you to have somebody that's living in or near your community. I, I think that is probably maybe going back to your one of your original questions. My biggest weakness is my distance from from Painesville. Um, I do believe that proximity is valuable. Be it just helps you understand the community when you're in it. That's the truth. Um, so so that that is a strength. I I think. Um, how I would, or excuse me, a weakness that I have given that I'm out down in the, in the metro area more. I think how I mitigate for that is being very intentional about trying to understand the community. And again, going back to what are your goals? What's important to you? Is it striving for, um, you know, keeping taxes really low? I mean, that's a thing that basically every city wants, but what does that look like? Is it, um, are you trying to, um, look at economic development opportunities and what does that look like and what is the city what is the city's um, appetite and and uh, willingness to court developers or to court um, your businesses that might want to come into your city it's so I think how I mitigate for that weakness is a genuine interest and in learning about you thank you that's what I have for scripted I don't have any other questions how about the council I don't think so. Nope. Amanda, is there anything else you'd like us to know that we haven't talked about or that you didn't necessarily, um, or that comes across better in person versus on a piece of paper? Um, yeah, I guess. So I, I had the opportunity of, of meeting your city administrator earlier this year um, down in the cities. And the, I'll be very honest, 
the reason that I wanted to apply for this city is I was incredibly impressed with him. I think that he has a ton of skills that his knowledge of economic development, his knowledge of where to find money, um, some of those things that I think are very important, particularly for smaller towns and more, um, uh, you know, out, out, more out state Minnesota, was the reason that I applied for this job because honestly, I think it would be really great to, to work to work with him, um, and uh, and I liked his just his entire attitude about what he does as a city administrator. I feel like his perspective is well aligned with mine, and um, so something that you would know about me based on the RFP that I provided and the questions that you've asked today is I think you have a great city administrator, and I would want to work with him. We should have done his review. Are you first? Oh, yeah. I a few minutes later, Amanda. Uh, <laughs> negotiating for salary. You have a good point. Yeah. First half the review. You know, you I don't know the, the ins and outs yeah. of it, but. Oops, I'm sorry, Amanda. Because of Zoom, we couldn't hear that last part. What was that? Oh, I said I, I, I don't know the ins and outs of it, and I won't pretend that I, you know, have a, a, a lot of interaction with him. But I, from what I've seen, I was very impressed. Well, thank He's, you. Yeah, he thanks you. He's a man who doesn't tout his oh. ego, but you've you've got him grinning for the first time. <laughs> I didn't realize he was in the room. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he's off camera. He's he's doing the tech support for us tonight. Oh, yeah. Um, so that was well, better than what she could have said. That's true. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. Right, well, I appreciate your time so much. Um, if there's anything else, please feel free. We're not making a decision on anything tonight. We're just going to stew over everything for a couple of weeks and then decide at our next meeting. So that way everybody Understood. has a chance to just ponder everything. So, mm -hmm. yep. Last yep, if call there's something else that you need from me, feel free to reach out. Okay. All right, appreciate you so much. Thanks for uh, Thank giving us your time tonight. Yeah, have a great night. Thank you, yep. you too. Huh. Well, now we're five minutes ahead. <laughs> They're five minutes well, out. Look at they this. are waiting, by the way. Bring them in. Oh, right, that, that way we can. Going. Well, I wasn't expecting that plug, but that was nice. Yeah. Before we do your review, of course. Exactly. There you go, guys. Well, we'll forget about it by you know oh, in the go. next two weeks. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, we'll forget. I think, I think she was coached. Yeah, I think she. He's got to send her a payment afterwards. <laughs> We're ahead of time. Yeah, every time you ask for if we have other questions, I'm like, that's my only good one, Sean. <laughs> yeah, but it, it is your question. And it, so it, has, to keep giving and you it has been interesting, the responses to it. Well, because I, you know, I, I definitely see both, but I, I do, I, I yeah, I, I want to know how that question is answered, so it's fine. Yeah. That's a good uh, hi. Hello. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Hello. So I'm, I'm Sean Rankin, I'm the mayor here in town. This is the council. We have a number of scripted questions that we'd just like to go through a little bit with you, if you don't mind, and then right. uh, sure. open it up either generally or if the council's got anything else, we can certainly do that. But uh, we had staff write some things up, and it's been working well so far. So why rock the boat? That sounds great. Um, could you give us a brief introduction of yourself and your firm? Sure. Yourselves, excuse me. Um, so, my name is Sam Ketchum. I'm an attorney at Kendi and Graven. Uh, we are located in Minneapolis. Uh, we have about 35 attorneys. Uh, our entire firm is dedicated to representing municipalities. Uh, so, we basically run the gamut of all different kinds of legal services for uh, cities. And uh, let my uh, colleague Mary Tijan introduce herself. Hi, I'm Mary Teachin. I'm also an attorney at Kennedy and Graven. I've been there for 23 years now. In addition to representing cities throughout the state, we also represent other public uh, entities, including townships. Um, we have a school law group. We have uh, we represent HRAs, EDAs, and, and, and a number of other types of public entities. Really, the largest municipal law firm. Um, in Minnesota that that really devotes you know over 95 percent of our time representing uh, public bodies throughout the state and we have not only our general municipal group but we have a bond we have a bond group that works with um, municipalities and um, economic development and we kind of we, we have uh, attorneys that practice in every area of municipal law I'll give you a little more background on myself too. I've been practicing for eight years. Uh, so uh, after uh, graduating law school, I clerked uh, in Hennepin County District Court for a few years and then 
uh, joined Kennedy and Graven. So I've been uh, working at uh, Kennedy and Graven for about five years, and my role is basically representing cities. So every you know uh, every type of legal issue that a city would uh, deal with. Um, you know, I, I basically responsible for providing routine legal advice and opinions to um, cities and also representing cities in some specific areas as well that we can get into. Um, as Mary said, we kind of all specialize in different things as well. So, um, but I just want to give a little more background for, for my experience as well. We'll touch on a couple of things that are germane, I think, at least to current events for the city as we go. Um, because it's going to kill me if I don't ask. Do you do CLE presentations as well, Sam? Is that how I know your name? Uh, I have done some CLE presentations uh, specifically for the Environmental Institute. I don't know if you've attended any of those, but okay. um, that would be probably the only time I think I've done a Who did you clerk for? Uh, Jason Hutchison and maybe Hedwig that's County. how I'm recognizing your name. I don't know. Okay, I, <laughs> Tarek told us who was coming, and I said I've met Sam or done. I don't know. Okay, you what met do you believe for us in, uh, in family court? <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't remember me, so that must be a good thing, at least. <laughs> or maybe you do. Um, what do you believe to be your strengths and weaknesses with city government? It's a great question. Uh, for me, I really enjoy problem solving. Uh, it's what I feel I get up every day to do. Um, you know, that's, I think, at the heart of what we do as city attorneys. Um, you know, whether it be uh, a contract or, you know, maybe a question about an employee or um, a decision about how to draft an ordinance, at the heart of that is problem solving. So I really enjoy that. Um, I think that's probably my greatest strength as well. Um, for weaknesses, I um, I think the other side of that is that you know sometimes um, it's uh, y you want to focus on basically getting um, a legal answer to your client, and um, you know I I'm always trying to find the truth in something, that, but um, you know I, I have to you know remember that we're you're, we're also uh, basically representing a client, and they have. Um, you know, concerns about efficiency and things like that. So I'm always trying to keep in mind our clients and um, and uh, the bottom line. I, if I could just add one thing, and um, I think as far as a firm, our strength is really the, if I could use a sports analogy, we have a very deep bench. <laughs> um, we have um, literally decades and hundreds of years of experience within our firm of attorneys who have been practicing in this area their entire careers. And I think what we could bring to your city is our strength is that experience that we have and the kind of team approach that we have. Because we represent so many cities, we would be able to provide a level of service that is very efficient for the city of Paintsville. When we get a call about a legal issue, it's probably something that we've seen before and that some other attorney or we have dealt with before um, with another community. And so very often we're able to utilize that um, to your advantage and to provide very efficient services rather than having to reinvent the wheel every time a question comes up or spend hours researching something that probably somebody else has already done that and found the answer and we're able to take advantage of that and share that with you and provide really efficient legal services. What is your availability to attend meetings in person versus Zoom? And then to the taxpayers, how much are you charging us to come here in person? Also a great question. Um, we, uh, in our uh, written response, we did propose um, essentially virtual meeting attendance for most of your meetings um, with in-person meeting attendance on a quarterly basis. Of course, we are absolutely open to any ideas you have or any preferences that the council or your staff has about um, meeting attendance. Um, we found that it varies quite a bit um, from city to city, that some cities really, um, especially in the last four or five years, really enjoy and um, find uh, city attorney uh, representation at virtual meetings 
um, to be effective, um, but that other cities prefer in-person attendance for some meetings or all meetings. Um, so uh, we did make a proposal in our uh, written response, but we are open to any um, you know, preferences of the council or staff on that. What is your, the firm's experience with street improvement projects, special assessments, and the 429 process? As, as city attorneys, uh, I think all of us are familiar with that, and have, that's a, really a routine part of our, our practice. Um, a number of cities that I work with have done 429 projects recently, so, um, you know, assisting with um, just general process questions, um, drafting, uh, the notices or legal documents agreements um, most of us have you know essentially worked on that um, Mary do you have anything to add no Sam's right we as a general counsel we all have experience with 429 process um, special assessments we all have general knowledge about that I've also handled a number of special assessment um, uh, litigation files appeals going that have gone to trial um, and uh, I don't do that litigation kind of work anymore. I'm a city attorney, but I do have that experience in my background. We also have um, a couple of litigators in our office who handle special assessment appeals and, and do that kind of service for, for all of our clients. So we do have that background within the firm. What is your experience with annexation and joint orderly annexation agreements, specifically litigating those agreements? Uh, for me personally, uh, I've looked at a number of orderly annexation agreements. I have uh, cities that I regularly represent or attend meetings for that have a lot of annexation issues um, or are, you know, renegotiating an orderly annexation agreement. Um, that is something in our firm that there might be a couple attorneys that have more experience with and that you know that's where that team approach comes in and you know we might hand that off to someone that has you know a lot of experience with that particularly litigating them um, but again that's something that a lot of our attorneys uh, you know in our city attorney practice group have experience in and mary i don't know if you have specific experience with that too. Yeah, again, we all have general experience with reviewing those agreements and working with um, cities on um, general questions. I actually did handle an annexation hearing uh, a few years back, um, so do have some knowledge of that process. But again, we do have an eminent domain group, um, and our attorneys who do the litigation in that area also handle annexation matters for our clients. but. We're, we do have experience um, with some of our smaller communities, and we represent a number of smaller communities kind of in central Minnesota um, who have dealt with annexation issues. That's a pretty regular um, uh, issue that we deal with. If the need should arise in the future for labor law advice or union negotiation services, do you handle those types of matters? The, so once again, as city attorneys, we all are representing employers um, but uh, we also have people like Mary who are experts in that um, so for example day to day I'm handling labor and employment issues all the time but if you have for example you know collective bargaining agreement negotiation or a really complicated um, employment issue we might bring in someone like Mary and she'll she'll uh, I'm sure talk about some of her labor and employment experience if you let her <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm, I am a city attorney, but I also um, have employment and labor as one of my areas of expertise. And so I work with a, a, many of our clients on reviewing personnel policies, handling discipline issues, termination matters, discrimination um, uh, claims, um, ADA, FMLA, veterans preference, um, data practices issues anything really related to employment um, matters. And we, we have uh, a couple of other attorneys who also specialize in this area, so it's not just me. Um, and I also have a fair amount of litigation experience in the, in the employment area. Uh, so <clears throat> that is definitely something that we can help with. I also have 
experience working with smaller communities who, who have had unions form um, and working with them on uh, negotiating and drafting contracts, uh, labor agreements. Is there anything that you would expect from us on or before January 1st to make it a smooth transition into your firm? I honestly can't think of anything right now. I, I, um, there's, I, I realize that you have an attorney that's been here for quite some time and, um, you know, uh, with um, any transition for legal counsel, it can be a matter of coordination with your current attorney, regardless of the circumstances of them, um, you know, no longer being your city attorney. I, I don't even personally know. Um, but uh, that is always something that I think is important for a smooth transition. And um, we are certainly familiar with um, just basically getting up to speed. Um, and, you know, I think it involves a lot of um, getting to know you and your staff um, and what their priorities are in terms of uh, the near future and what you have going on at the council level as well as the staff level. So I think, if anything, it would be, you know, conversations like that with your, with your staff and, and with you as council, but um, potentially also your city attorney, just to understand, you know, what sort of um, work that they're currently doing and what they may need to hand off. Uh, and then a question that council member Brick brilliantly posed earlier is, <laughs> It's a good question. I'll give you credit. <laughs> no, it's just that when you ask if we have questions, I'm like, no, you took it. It's my <laughs> one question. <laughs> Do you see any pros and cons to living outside of the city limits? I mean, our current attorney has been a member of this community for decades. He's been our city attorney for decades. Um, so are there pros and cons to him living here or you know, you not living here specifically? And how would you offset any of those cons? <clears throat> That's a Great, insightful question. Um, thank you for that, Councilmember Brick. You're welcome. You know, I think the obvious con is that your current city attorney knows this community extremely well um, and probably is familiar with even some of the people that um, come before you. Um, on the flip side, um, you know, we uh, have uh, experience all you know, everywhere outside of your city limits. I, I mean, we represent more cities than any law firm in the state. And I personally have, in the last five years, worked with almost all of our cities. Um, so I, you know, from that experience, get to see how a lot of different cities across the state do things. Um, I will say that a number of cities that I work with and regularly attend meetings um, for are kind of located in a similar area as you. Um, I do a lot of work for Maple Lake and Montrose. Our firm represents uh, Cocado and I've done some work for them. Um, so I think that um, while I may not practice in city limits, I have you know some understanding of um, cities of this size, um, the general geographic area, and probably a lot of the things you um, might need as as a city attorney <coughs> looking at you know your agenda that are up on the wall. Um, those are some of the same issues I'm going to be dealing with in, in in Maple Lake tomorrow night, and that I think Mary and I have been uh, you know working with in other communities around here. So, and if I could add something to this, you know, because of the the length of uh, number of years that some of our attorneys have been practicing i can honestly say and me too i'm 23 years you know i i personally and i know from working with my colleagues for so long that that our our our, our practice is based on relationships with our clients and um, yes it's a business but we literally have had cities as clients for decades. I think that um, one of the cities I represent in the Twin Cities, the city of Richfield, has been a client of Kennedy and Gravens or a predecessor firm since the 1950s. Um, we have a number of smaller communities too and, and so it is really about developing those relationships and whether we're in the same physical proximity or not, um, 
the size of the city also doesn't dictate the priority that we give you in terms of the service um, because uh, smaller communities have a lot going on just like bigger communities do and so we really do pay attention to that and um, are proud to say that we, re we represent a variety of types of communities and that's what I think that we love, uh, why we love what we do. Mm -hmm. um, but it really is based on developing those relationships um, regardless of where the city is located. Thank you so much. Anyone else on the council? Mm -hmm. Anything else you'd like to tell us about yourselves or the firm? And I was, I've creeped on a couple of Maple Lakes meetings, so I'm wondering if that's where the name is from. Ah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> bless your hearts. Bless your hearts. <laughs> if, if anything, we'd, I think I would have just a couple of questions for you all, or mm -hmm. please. maybe um, Mr. Absolutely. Tarek as well. Um, I, so I think one question we always like to ask at these interviews is, you know, what do you sort of value as a city attorney, or how do you see your um, city attorney role uh, with your specific council or your staff? So um, one of the things that I have grown to appreciate, and perhaps we use it as a crutch, is our mm -hmm. city attorney being at the end of the table yes. to kick us if we start to get out of line, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that can prevent some issues at times. Um, so that might be difficult if you're not here or you know certainly if you're virtual you can do that but mm -hmm. there are things that you might not be able to do just out of the, the side eye you know that you can communicate with yes. body language as effectively yeah so i think that is something that is going to be hard yeah. to get used to but everything else i mean bill's great at answering his phone and emails and i know that you guys would be too that's less of a concern for me mm -hmm. it's that in personal connection of the you only just showed up now. <laughs> yeah well but. and we have he's He's retiring, and and he's been here thirty decades. Oh, yeah. at least thirty. His part former partner was the city attorney, so we're extremely spoiled having him at every meeting, planning commission, whatever we need, and the history that he has. Yeah. Yeah. Institutional we'll, memory. Yeah, we'll be talking about something, and he'll look at me, and I'll look at him, and say, "Didn't that happen, Bill?" Because mm -hmm. I've been here. As, for, <laughs> Forever, too. Since the city was founded. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, frankly, that's kind of what my but question was about. That's going to be a, an adjustment, a hard adjustment. We're used to, you know, Bill being there, being like, Megan, just, no. <laughs> so, um, or things like that. Um, and, you know, we all, of course, to be elected to this position, we have to live inside the city limits because we have to have, you know, if you're going to pass ordinances and things such as that, they should affect you, too. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's always something that Bill and his, I'm sure his predecessor had he in mind as well. He's in though. He's not in I the am aware, Gene. I'm talking about the area. Um, he makes too much money to live in the city. Come on now. Um, but, you know, I, I do think that there's a degree of, um, you know, no matter how good of um, objectivity that you're not going to get from somebody, you know, who lives in the area, especially as somebody who's lived and worked and is in, enmeshed in the city culture for so long. So... Um, I do think that's a positive. I think we're all just going to have to work on being a little more, you know, so conscientious we, of what we're saying. Yep. Yeah. I mean, there are League of Minnesota City trainings and things like that that we all try and attend. But I assume if we needed like a an open meeting refresher, you could come in and. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's sure. Just, Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I actually I've done open meeting law trainings for right. um, a few city. Uh, I believe both city councils and planning commissions. So, um, but we have a lot of training, just materials for all different kinds of things. And and again, I, I just I I, I want to note that we are very open to different arrangements in terms of your meeting attendance. So I, I mean, there is some real benefit to having mm -hmm. um, virtual meeting attendance, but at times that doesn't work. Um, there are certain meetings that we get called to just because. You know, it, it, the, there's a particular land use application on the on the um, agenda, or there's a you know something that they need a um, presentation from a city attorney on. And we're willing to do that, and um, we're flexible on kind of the uh, the attendance part of this. Well, I just I think sorry um, the you know earlier in our meeting when okay you know I can talk fast. Um, 
earlier in our meeting when we had the question about how we were going to reimburse the garden club for the new irrigation system you know we were just you made the motion and then um bill was like you know hold on a second let's do this this way to make it a little more smooth for the books and i think that that's just something that we're accustomed to um and i think that's going to be one of our bigger transitions more for us than you yeah absolutely <laughs> that's a big transition when you work for somebody work with somebody for so long mm -hmm. yeah. and bill gives us a lot of advice uh variances too many this that Mm -hmm. We don't always listen. I mean, <laughs> probably drove the man to early love retirement. advice, but that doesn't mean. <coughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we're used to that too. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the all questions. Our clients listen to us. We yeah. have like Don right. last year. Can we give money to this? That. Yeah. Terry can ask you the next day. We don't need an immediate answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, there are questions that come up that don't always need mm -hmm. an answer right at the meeting. Right. So that's a very good point. Um, that some, a lot of things can be addressed the next day or within the next few days. So. Well, I thank you both. We have people in the virtual waiting room, so I'm going to say right. goodbye, thank but it was such nice a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's yeah. nice meeting you. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Boy, we have three people here. Oh, two. Take two. The name you gave me was Michael Irvin. Yep. And we also have this. That's his. his, his, his. Hmm. Michael. No. Better turn the ball. Zach Cordon, and I'm not sure if my uh, name's popping up on the screen or not. Yep, we see you, Zach. Um, we're just letting a couple of other people in here. And which, which firm are you with? Squires. Um, Squires, Waldsburg. All right, yeah, all right. I have one more colleague of yours, I think, joining, right? You have? Yeah, Mike Irvin, I'm here as well. Okay. Is there a Margo with you? No. Nope. Okay, yes. next one then. All right, gentlemen, my name is Sean Ranke. I'm the mayor here in town. Oh, hold on. Um, we have a number, I'm here with the council. Uh, we have a number of scripted questions that we'd like to go over with you. That's been working well for us so far this evening. And then uh, we'll sort of turn it over to you if you've got anything for us or if the council has anything else. How does that sound? Sounds great. Okay. Um, could you please give us just a brief intersect introduction of yourselves and your firm? Yep, so my name is Zach Cronin. I am a shareholder at the firm. And Mike, do you want to introduce to yourself? Yep, uh, Michael Irvin. I usually go by Mike. I'm also a shareholder at the firm. I'm a year behind Zach in terms of when I came into the firm and how long I've been there. And I've been there eight years. Okay. So our law firm, we have 10 shareholders, eight associates, and uh, one staff attorney. Um, as we outlined in RFP, we represent exclusively public entities, so we represent uh, school districts, cities, and counties um, across the state in both Minnesota and some in Wisconsin. What do you think are your strengths and weaknesses with city governments? I would say our strengths are, are uh, well, frankly, the fact that we focus on public entities. I think that's a big, um, important aspect of our firm. We only represent public entities. We know municipal law, we um, we have a lot of good resources because we've got 19 attorneys in the firm, some have been practicing for decades, so we have a lot of good resources. We've been doing this work for a long time, so we've got a good knowledge base, a good sort of document base. We've done many condemnations, we've done real estate transactions, we do HR training, so we've got a, a solid <laughs> um, As far as weaknesses, I really, you know, I don't see too many. I think Obviously, we're a Minneapolis firm, you know, so we are you know, a little bit further from, from Painesville. I'm originally from Hutch. I have family out in Candy, Ohio, and Dassel, so I'm familiar with the area, but, you know, obviously, we're a Minneapolis firm, but, again, we represent um, 
cities and school districts across the state so that <laughs> at all, we're always available. Um, and frankly, tonight I actually have a another city council meeting in Red Wing, but one of my colleagues is able to, to cover for me while I um, participated in this. So, you know, that I think is a kind of strength where we've got so many attorneys who are able to kind of step in. We're always able to answer your questions immediately because uh, we don't view our clients as, you know, Mike and I's client or just Mike's client or my client. It's really the firm's client. So we're always there to, to answer questions and we always have resources for our clients. And just to add on that, I'd say our attorneys are all cross-trained in different areas of the law. Over time, we kind of have people that specialize, say, in property issues and employment issues and investigations. Different areas of law, people kind of fall into different specialties. But because we have attorneys at the firm that are kind of growing in all of these areas until they find their niche, We've got a lot of people that can do a lot of different types of law, and I think that's helpful for government clients because you get all kinds of different legal issues that come in the door, and you need people with a broad array of expertise. What is your availability of, to attend our meetings in person versus on Zoom? And then to the taxpayers, what would you charge us to be here in person? Yep, so uh, we do whatever the client needs. Like I mentioned, I have a closed session tonight in Red Wing. Um, obviously, my colleagues covering the in-person aspect, but um, I'll be able to log in via Zoom, which I think will work well for them tonight. Um, so we will be flexible. Some clients want us to come to one meeting a month. They're all meetings. Some don't want us to come to any unless there's a special need. Um, and, and what we charge is essentially our time from Minneapolis um, to attend the meeting there and back. Okay. Can you describe your experience with street improvement projects, special assessments, and the 429 process? Yeah, so I, um, I guess I can go first. I represent the city of Adrian. Right now we have 20, no, we just settled, 24 assessment appeals on a recent road improvement project. Um, so we deal, we'll come in and deal kind of and consult with cities at any stage of the process. Some, again, want us to, to be there on the front end with the 429 process and help draft the notices and the, the, the public documents. Um, other clients will kind of come in after when there's been an assessment appeal. Um, but yeah, we've got quite a bit of experience. Jay Squires at all, our, our firm has been practicing for, I think, going on 30 years, and he's kind of uh, the guru at that. You know, So he frankly taught Mike and I a lot of what we know about condemnation and 429 and, and those sort of areas. And my road improvement experience has all been in the condemnation realm. Whenever I'm driving out 94 towards St. Cloud, I go under the Dayton Interchange Bridge, and we had a hand in acquiring the properties that we needed to to help with that interchange. So, you know, we do have I, I have experience working on those that project and similar projects for other municipal clients. <laughs> What is your experience with the annexation process and joint orderly annexation agreements and specifically litigation of those agreements? Well, I can't speak for Zach. I haven't had experience with that. The most likely attorney at our firm who would have done that is Jay Squires, given the amount of time that he spent. Um, so we could talk with him and see if you know that's something he's done before. But I don't personally have any experience, and I'm not sure what Zach has done in that regard. We lost Looks like Zach. we lost Zach. Oh, he's coming back. Is he coming back? Yep, he's in. Mm. Apologize for that. Uh, I kicked well, my uh, charger said. and my oh, computer just kicked it. So. No, you're all good. Uh, I once broke the camera at the DMV, so I understand. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I asked the question, and Mike answered it a little bit, but Zach will ask you as well. Uh, what is your experience with the annexation process and joint orderly annexation agreements, and specifically litigating those types of agreements? Yeah, I haven't dealt with that a ton, um, frankly, but I know Jay Squires has. And I've dealt with um, working with school districts who are annexing property. Um, recently had that come up where 
Um, they, a school district was purchasing a property that needed to connect to city water and sewer. We helped them through that process, but I was on the school district side for that. Um, but yeah, our firm again has that knowledge base. Okay. If the need should arise in the future for labor law advice and union agreements, things like that and negotiations, do you offer those services? Yes, yes, we do um, a lot of negotiations. Um, so uh, we represent, I don't know the exact number, 150 school districts, and we deal with teachers unions, other um, uh, you know, unions on that side. I've personally handled negotiations, um, and we also represent cities. So I know another shareholder is working with a client right now and doing all their police negotiations. So again, we, Mike and I personally have experience, and the firm has a lot of experience in that area. What would you need from us to make it a smooth transition to your rep, uh, firm on or before January 1st? It would be helpful for us to understand what your pending legal issues are and if there's any outstanding files that you have with whomever you're using right now for your attorney, we'd, like, we'd need those files to be transferred over so we could get up to speed. We might want to talk with those people as well to have a better understanding of you know what the pending legal matters are where they stand and what the next steps are in terms of what we would need to take over to transition those files yeah, I would say sometimes um, again, I don't know if there's any outstanding litigation or matters that are kind of nearing completion but sometimes it does make sense to have some transition where if you have a, a current attorney they can kind of finish out files the reality is we're willing to work with you on whatever that's you know whatever your preference is if you want us to take over we're happy to do that if you want to let, let those kind of matters resolve themselves that works as too but like mike said getting sort of a current state of your issues you know where your your um, collective bargaining agreements are as far as if you've got any ongoing negotiations or you're thinking of starting soon that would be helpful for us to kind of get a lay of the land and our current city attorney has been with us for decades, a member of our community for decades. His partner before him represented the city. Do you have any, do you see any pros and cons to not being local? And if there are cons, how would you offset them? I think sometimes, go ahead, Mike. I think one of the pros is that we we're based in Minneapolis, but we work with clients all over the state at the for cities for counties for school districts we're not a metro based firm in terms of our clientele and so you know we actually represent a number of school districts that are closely around you guys so i think we have even though we're a minneapolis based firm we understand the needs of our clients that are further out in outstate Minnesota. So I think we can bring the experience base we have from clients dealing with issues all throughout the state to bear or a client in your specific region because we, we see things from all different perspectives and locations and, and have the expertise that we can then tailor to your situation. And I'll kind of piggyback off that. I think uh, at some level, it's it's nice to have um, you know city attorney who is potentially not part of the community. In that you know we're not as connected to the sometimes feelings. You know, there's there's issues that come up that can be pretty contested and pretty heated. And you know, we I think kind of kind of have a neutral um, view of things. You know, the flip side is you know I'm like I said I'm from Hutch. I'm you know I've got family in small communities. I know that connection is really nice. You know, obviously we won't have that. We're not going to be running into you guys at dinner or you know walking down the street and catching up with people so I, I do see that side but i think at some level especially with legal services I, I i can see benefits to sort of being a little bit more of an outside perspective do you still represent the school district we do um mick waltzberger from our firm i think is their primary contact i worked with them maybe a two years ago on a kind of one-off thing. So I don't work with them a ton, but Mick Waltzberger, I think, works with them quite a bit. And do you see any potentials for conflict there? I don't think we've ever had a dispute over anything. Nope. And I, and I actually talked to Mick, too, before we went through this process, because I, I do like to know, you know, if we represent, because this has come up before where we represent, you know, a city or a county or, you know, school district that overlap. And I talked with Mick, and he didn't see any issues. He said there's been a good relationship. 
I also wanted to flag I was recently hired by Stearns County to do a, a one-off construct. I do a lot of construction work um, with uh, construction contracts, and then if there's ever disputes, so I was hired by Stearns County recently to work with them on that. It's again a one-off thing. I our firm doesn't really do any other general Stearns County work. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything else from the council? All right, we've only got a few seconds, gentlemen, but is there anything else you'd like us to know that maybe comes across better in the written word than on paper? No, I, I think, you know, again, we, we really like the, the work we do. We really love our clients. You know, we've, we've got clients that we've had as a firm for decades. We value these long-term relationships. I mean, I know you mentioned you've had your city attorney for, you know, going on decades. So I think that to us is a, a really important part of our firm. We, we, we really like to keep our clients. We like to develop relationships, get to know, you know, the council members and the staff that we work with. So we think that's a, a, a good selling point of our firm and, you know, we appreciate your, your time and consideration. Okay. I guess so one much. thing I would add, a big bulk of our attorneys are in their 30s and some in their late 20s. We're kind of, we're growing into um, leadership role. You can tell Zach and I are younger guys, but we've got a good core of people in their 30s who are really growing in this field and can be able to you know work with you guys as a client if if that worked out for decades kind of the way you've had with your current attorney awesome well i appreciate your your gentleman's time this evening we're going to let you go we uh have one more firm that we're interviewing and then we're going to decide at our next council meeting at the end of the month so we will keep you all posted thank you so much all right thanks again for your time thanks guys Bye. Last one, guys. You ready? Yep. All right, let's do it. Is there a bottle of water in the fridge back there? Probably. That was my aunt's Mark. Good evening. Hello. I see a Tim and Margo. Good evening to you both. Thanks for joining us so late here. Good evening. Pleasure. Hello. So I'm Sean Ranke. I'm the mayor here in Painesville. I'm sitting here at the dais with the rest of the council. Thank you both for joining us. Um, we've got a, a few scripted questions that I'd like to go through, if you don't mind, and then uh, we can maybe open it up for some general discussion, depending on how time allows, if that's okay for you both. Sounds good. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, could you first just give us a brief introduction of yourselves and your firm? Uh, certainly, and I'll uh, keep it brief because I know time is short. Uh, good evening, my name is Tim Keen. Uh, thank you for considering QTAC Rock and our qualifications. I'm joined this evening uh, with uh, Margo Wickman, managing partner of our Minneapolis office, and I apologize that our second chair, Jessica Anderson, is out of the country, uh, returning midweek and unable to join us. Uh, as noted uh, in our uh, cover to the city administrator, our family, my family, uh, has maintained a residence, second residence on Rice Lake for over 25 years. Huh. Uh, Ainsville is kind of our second home uh, for uh, shopping and play and hospitality and church. Uh, our office uh, has a deep experience in municipal matters and pretty much can cover the full suite of uh, municipal needs from land use planning and zoning uh, to public improvements, special assessments, personnel matters, code enforcement, public finance. Uh, we serve as uh, finance counsel to the state of Minnesota and public agencies throughout the state. And uh, I'll take a minute and turn it over to Margo. Thanks, Tim, and, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for taking the time. We appreciate the opportunity to talk to you tonight. As Tim said, I'm Margo Whitman. I'm the managing partner of the Minneapolis office. My, uh, my background, just by way of explanation, is primarily in real estate. Tim and I share that background, although Tim's got a much heavier uh, emphasis in municipal uh, practice, but uh, I've been practicing in real estate since about 1995. I've been with the firm since 1995 as well. 
and uh, just looking forward to this opportunity. Thank you both. Uh, what is your, your firm's, what do you believe to be the strengths and weaknesses in working with city governments? City government is uh, certainly my favorite area of practice, uh, working with uh, public spirited, public minded people. Uh, I know none of you elected officials are in this for uh, money or attention. Uh, you're all dedicated to the community and, and uh, always trying to do the right thing. And you're at the front line. Uh, you deal with your uh, constituents uh, at the supermarket and in uh, uh, community gatherings and uh, uh, in your worship experience. And so that's as close as people get to government is uh, uh, municipal affairs. And municipal affairs are the most important governmental functions that touch people's lives from clean water, sanitary sewer parks, public safety. Uh, these are the most essential services that uh, the government can provide in people's lives. And uh, you are the board of directors that are the trustees of the public FISC and responsible for delivering those services uh, thoroughly and efficiently and as counsel to the city, to city municipal government, uh, I have an opportunity to work directly with department heads and public officials and those that are engaged in that critical work in everyone's lives. So uh, that's the short version of my interest and dedication to uh, municipal practice is that it's uh, always been enjoyable and the uh, satisfaction of a job well done serving the community is uh, uh, what I enjoy most. Mm -hmm. what would down, I, th I think what Tim just expressed there about the uh, connection to the community and supporting the community is very consistent with the law firm's approval which is a whole we very much focus on uh, supporting the communities wherever our offices are the firm was founded on that kind of aspect very democratically focused I'm not talking about politics just very ground up and, and roots based uh, organization. So we really feel aligned with the uh, values that a city has in serving its uh, population. Thank you. What would your availability be to attend meetings in person versus just on Zoom? And uh, what would you charge the taxpayer to do that? Uh, I anticipate that the uh, uh, two meetings a month. Uh, of the city council, I believe it's every uh, second, fourth Monday, uh, would be we would be in attendance, uh, serving live. Uh, I also encourage uh, uh, participation and uh, the uh, city management's uh, department meetings, uh, working with staff on issues in advance of them becoming council issues uh, in my experience is some of the most important work that the city attorney can serve and uh, I would hope that uh, I would be invited to those meetings and participate in those uh, and uh, we would charge uh, for those services at our standard hourly rates Could you discuss your experience with street improvement projects, special assessments, and the 429 process? And certainly, uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, some of the, the most critical work that uh, the city provides, the uh, street, sewer, water, stormwater management, uh, those necessary public improvements don't come free uh, and the 
benefits of those improvements that are assessed through the 429 process are uh, are how most of those local public improvements are financed and my experience uh, working with city management city engineer public works and uh, valuation experts in order to uh, properly ensure that uh, the economic benefit to the assessed properties is is present as required in state law and uh, so I have done countless uh, assessment projects over my career and street assessments are some of the most difficult because streets are expensive uh, people have streets in front of their homes and uh, businesses and may not always see the benefit of the financial benefit of a street replacement that is going to be there to serve for 30 or 50 years and uh, coming up with the proper financial mechanisms and uh, cost sharing for those projects is uh, an important part of the uh, the work that the city does uh, and uh, again you know working closely with all the disciplines is uh, essential to successful public improvement and assessment projects what experience do you have with annexation and joint orderly annexation agreements specifically maybe litigating those agreements Incidentally, I'm kind of a household name over at the uh, State Office of Boundary Adjustment uh, in the Department of Administration. Uh, I have uh, personally uh, quarterbacked the process for uh, incorporating three townships into municipalities. Uh, I am almost always involved, and I am currently uh, on a number of both for a township and a city and fairly contentious uh, uh, annexation process and uh, uh, navigating and negotiating annexation agreements and uh, I litigated uh, through the uh, Office of Boundary Adjustment and uh, actually once to district court uh, annexation matters. So uh, the uh, uh, process is, is complicated, often controversial, and uh, involves not only the municipality and the township, but also the property owners. Uh, they're key stakeholders and all of those discussions. And uh, it's just a triumvirate process, but also has to follow the uh, standards and findings required under the uh, Chapter 414. Does your firm offer uh, guidance in labor law issues or negotiations as well if that need ever arises in the future? Yes, we uh, uh, we have uh, a very deep bench in that area. Uh, Jessica Anderson uh, is our uh, one of our labor and employment specialists, and uh, she has uh, experience not only in in uh, navigating uh, employment matters, but also uh, uh, organizational issues and and. Uh, negotiating agreements with uh, collective bargaining. What would you expect from us on or before January 1st to make this a smooth transition to your firm? Uh, well, I, I, I do believe we have a running start with uh, my familiarity with uh, Painesville and uh, the surrounding area. Uh, but uh, I would certainly uh, ask to engage uh, 
in an informal fashion with uh, the uh, city administrator. Uh, uh, he has chosen uh, department heads as well as um, uh, council members, transitioning issues, uh, hot button issues that are uh, either on the front burner or uh, coming forward to the council, uh, being briefed, understanding, familiarizing ourselves with those issues, and then uh, uh, putting our skills and experience to work to hit the ground running upon full engagement. Our current city attorney has been a member of our community for decades, and his predecessor before that was a member of the community. Uh, do you see any pros and cons to living primarily outside of the city limits? Um, and how would you offset any cons that you might see? Well, I, I've known Mr. Spooner and uh, worked respectfully with him through the Minnesota City Attorneys Association uh, for many years. Uh, I have, uh, as a personal matter, uh, I think there's actually some benefit to uh, a bit of detachment and objectivity, uh, uh, not separate, being separated from the community I serve, but uh, not necessarily being in the middle of controversies uh, as a resident. And uh, that I believe is a is a positive. Uh, as a former city planner, as a former city zoning administrator, uh, I am a great believer that uh, the work that is done is with boots on the ground, uh, handling uh, development proposals, land use applications, economic redevelopment. That can only be done uh, when you know the community intimately, you've walked the streets, you're familiar with the relationship of uh, land uses one to the other. Uh, Painesville is kind of a unique community. Uh, you have a uh, significant commercial base. Uh, you've got a wonderful resource in the uh, your golf course, your airport, uh, uh, Highway 23 uh, and 55 that serve the, uh, uh, the region and the sub-region well. Uh, but uh, knowing and understanding the, uh, the work on the front lines uh, can only be done with boots on the ground. Anything else that you might want us to know that maybe comes across better in the spoken word rather than in the RFP you submitted? Or the proposal, excuse me? Well, I'll, I'm happy to close, but I'll, I'll defer it to uh, Margo first, and uh, then I'll wrap it up. Yeah, uh, thanks again, everybody. I don't, I don't know if there's too much that doesn't uh, get reflected in our proposal, but to the extent it, uh, it matters to the council. Our firm is, you know, it's a national firm. We've got offices in 14 other states. And the reason that may be relevant is that we can then draw on the expertise of a lot of different communities. So to the extent there's a unique issue that's brought in front of Painesville, it may be something that we've seen in another state. So we can bring that to this representation as well. And uh, just to put a little frosting on the cake, uh, I, uh, I, I bring a lot of energy and enthusiasm uh, to the work, to my engagement with clients, the relationships we keep. And uh, I care. Uh, I care about the success of the clients, the success of the community. And uh, uh, I want to see us all do well. Uh, I have had just a wonderful uh, background of different experiences throughout my career, uh, differing communities from freestanding communities to rural communities to transition communities to uh, 
uh, fully developed uh, cities and uh, being having my background in uh, urban planning and, and economic development, uh, I think that brings uh, uh, a perspective and uh, insights that may not be reflected in a resume, uh, but uh, all is part of the work of growing the community we serve. Appreciate you both. Thank you so much. Does the council have anything else we'd like to ask? I don't think so. All right. I uh, appreciate your time. We had a number of firms that we talked to tonight. We're going to stew on everything for a couple of weeks and then make a decision at our next meeting. So I, I appreciate your time but this evening, and uh, we will certainly be in touch. Well, thank you for the generosity of your time. And good luck with your work and your decisions. Thank, thank you. you so much, folks. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Bye-bye. Yep. All right. Okay. We have a lot. We do. How do we decide? I had some preconceptions coming into tonight. Yeah. And I, uh, I think they were all challenged. Yeah. Some of mine went out the window, too. It's going to be a hard decision. Very. They're pretty equal on a lot of... If we're going to decide this at our 28th meeting, I would like to get together like before the meeting so we can go talk about this because i think we're too tired tonight yeah no we can't talk about no. it tonight no i'm not going to go over anything tonight no huh? my anniversary with you people <laughs> yeah well now you get to go spend it at the yeah hour, so. <laughs> get an hour and a half with andy <laughs> to work. that's all he needs yeah it's all good <laughs> you worked for him today it was fine <laughs> i spent more than one here yeah, to discuss this, does the meeting need to be open? Yeah. Well, anytime we meet, it needs to be open, right? Yeah. Pretty much, unless it's labor. Yeah, unless it's not labor, so we do have oh. to discuss on the So open. we could just do a special working session again? Do we want to do a special working session, or do we just want to talk about it as part of our next agenda? I don't know. I'd like to not make the meeting last so long, and I think it could take some discussion. Yeah. Well, and, and I think equally, we don't want to feel like, you know, we have to, I think it'd be good to have time just to discuss it and discuss nothing else. Okay. Get over it. I don't know. That's just my feeling right now at this point, but what does everybody else think? Special meeting. Yeah. That's my gut instinct. Yeah, okay. mine too. Well, is that a time limit on it? You don't talk about it for two hours? I'm not no, talking we're not talking about hour. it for not more than an hour. Okay. Next week, we'll do it. Yeah, text me. We're adjourned for tonight, folks. Thank you. Yay.